Managers of Reddit, what is the most unprofessional thing an employee has done that resulted in an immediate termination? Fired a guy in his first week for browsing and downloading P at work on his lunch break, on a computer in a large open room that other people worked in, at a government organization, so caught him red handed, warned him not to do that, already thinking this guy will be fired at the end of the day but have to go through the channels, was a weekend shift. Then two hours later, he does it again, at the same place. At that point, I had the VP's approval to just fire him and we will deal with the paperwork on the Monday. Let him go. He's shocked but doesn't say much. Being the only manager on site I take screenshots of the sites he visited. Forward it off to HR and the VP to document it all. A few days later, the guy's father calls the VP to complain about his son being fired. Guy was in his mid-twenties. Apparently, the fired employee never thought him being fired on the day he was busted for browsing pornography on a government computer in a government office was a reason to be fired, and he never told his irate father about this. So the VP deals with this very diplomatically saying employee was viewing inappropriate content at work, was warned, continued bad behavior. Father doesn't accept the explanation so the VP starts reading off the list of the sites that were visited. All of them were hardcore sites geared towards large African American women. Fired employee was Caucasian. The real kicker to this was that the VP believed that the fired employee was listening in on his father's conversation via another phone. Just as the sites were being read off there was a very audible click of that phone being hung up. That last sentence though. My husband is a manager and his employee somehow had another employee's ID and then stole that person's check and cashed it. Caught it all on camera. She still denied it. In the legal field, that's called the shaggy defense. But we saw you sign the paper it wasn't me. We even caught you on camera it wasn't me. In auto sales one of our salesmen always seemed to be up to something. Between all lying to customers, drug abuse and constant fighting at home he was impossible to manage. Unfortunately he was the type that gave the rest of us a bad name. Eventually he got into it with our GSM about several issues and his go-to was to start making fun of our GSM's handicapped son. I had so much respect for our GSM. He took him in an office, told him he was terminated and walked out even though I know inside he was boiling with rage. Glad he's gone. Gotta give your GSM credit. Dude's got serious control to not just sucker punch the prick. I would have. Not a manager but had to share. Worked at Jamba Juice. Co-worker put bare hands into his pants and scratched his crotch at the register while helping a guest. When the guest commented he put his fingers in his face and said smell it. I had an officer under me. He was reported in a tree. I went to investigate the last place he was seen. He was still there, attempting to pepper spray birds. I wish I could have made that up. Fired immediately. What's hilarious is that pepper spray has no effect on birds. They can't taste it and it doesn't irritate their eyes. I own a tree removal service. Hired a guy as a ground worker. He worked great the first two weeks. Didn't complain. Seemed to know the work. And I paid him well. The third week working for me, we did a job that consisted of two big box elders to be removed. It was 95 degrees that day. I told all the guys that day don't push yourselves too much. Make sure you're getting enough fluids, and if you need a break, take one. The new guy drove his own vehicle to the job as he needed to leave that day 40 minutes early to make it to a dentist appointment. We are like 40 minutes into the job. I notice he's moving really, really slow. Just looked really unmotivated, and like he didn't want to be there. We had the customer's driveway blocked off with brush everywhere. At this point I'm still climbing in the tree and I see the new guy driving through the customer's yard, which was like 2 acres, and then onto the road in a serious hurry. I called him probably 30 times to make sure everything was alright. Didn't hear back from him. My other employees had no idea and were in shock. They saw him hop in his truck, and just dart. He decided right then and there frick this and left. Still haven't heard from him to this day. I didn't terminate him, that's the closest I would have come to firing someone. I don't know if I would have fired him if he showed up again the next day but he would have had to do some pretty good explaining with a sincere apology for not letting anyone know, and having the rest of the guys pick up the slack. 
my construction company was building a new addition on a hospital. One morning, the president of the hospital called to inform me that he had just watched one of our laborers smoke crack in his truck while on break. Went to the job site, talked to the kid. He said your eye was but I waited till break time. You aren't supposed to drive your personal vehicle to the job site for liability reasons. Oh yeah, and you're not supposed to smoke crack, even on break. We've had some winners over the years, but that kid took the cake. Obligatory this blew up comment. I've edited the first part of the story to be easier to read. I apologies. My bedtime brain likes to use run on sentences. This was definitely one of those situations that was not funny when it happened but is a hilarious story now. Thanks for your comments. Not a manager, but I had a teacher who was fired due to a spectacular display of poor judgment. I was in grade 5, so 9 10 year olds. The teacher decided to reward some good behavior with a movie in class. We were given a choice between movie about a family in the mountains, and a movie about a ghost. We picked the family because we thought the ghost movie might be scary. It was The Shining. We watched it, and edited, in class. Some kids hid their faces through most of it. Most of us went home and had terrible nightmares, and the teacher was forcibly removed from class and fired the following morning. Interestingly, I encountered my story as an urban legend 20 years later when I was completing my teaching degree. In case you're wondering, the movie about the ghost? It was Poltergeist. Nice. We were shown Nightmare on Elm Saint. In 7th grade science while our teacher graded tests. When my mom called her on it she told the principal that she was really busy grading and didn't know what was on the TV. 20 feet directly in front of her. For 45 minutes. It was even her own tape that she brought from her home and put in the machine. So far as I know she still works there today. Wasn't the manager at the time, but I work at a movie theater and we like most places have a rewards program. You show your card to the box office cashier as you purchase your ticket and as you cycle points you get free drinks popcorn and eventually a free ticket. This one cashier who seemed to always have tons of cash on her person would take the guest free tickets and keep it. When the next guest would come and pay exact change she would use the free ticket and pocket the cash. Like, we do have cameras in the box office so it was shock she got away with it for so long. She got caught because a very regular guest asked to speak to our GM and was wondering why she isn't getting free tickets anymore. Fast forward a few days the same guest comes back but she can't stay for her movie she had to leave and wanted a refund our GM goes down to handle it for her and notices the ticket was a free movie so we can't give her a refund. She insisted she paid exact change to the cashier that was there a few hours ago. She reviews the footage and sure enough exact change for a ticket no coupon but the cashier had in front of her and slides it sneakily to use GM greeted her in the break room and told her to take her stuff home she no longer works here. I was the manager at a local concrete plant. We hired a new yardman whose responsibilities were to drive the payloader and load the plant when needed and keep the piles of sand and aggregate pushed up and clean. I trained him for a few hours on the machine. He had experience bit on a different style of loader, and then return to my office. A while later, I look over the yard and see the loader sitting on top of the 3 stroke 4 gravel pile at 45 degree angle, bucket full and raised, motionless. I called to him on the mobile radio, and got no response. The piles were in the far back of the yard, and for the next few minutes I called again, and again but my calls were unanswered. Fearing a mechanical, or worst case scenario a medical emergency, me and one of my dispatchers ran the 150 or so meters from the office through the yard to the loader and there he is, on his cell phone. I climb the ladder and bang on the door, and he responds in a rather loud voice, hey, I am on the phone. I immediately tell him to dump his bucket and come down off of the pile. At first he ignores me, but after after a second request he complies, but he is visibly aggravated. He proceeded to ask me what my freaking problem was, to which I respond, my problem is, as of right now I need to hire someone to drive this freaking loader, get off the property, he was very sour about it, and as the three of us walked back to the office I radioed the owner, who had his termination slip ready when we got there. Well, of course he had to get halfway up the pile, cell service probably sucked at the bottom. Had an employee come back from work on drugs. Pretty sure H or some other opiate. They could hardly stand. 
I saw them drink out of two glasses and then try to take them to their table for the guests. I stopped him and brought him in the office. He then told me I was unprofessional and didn't deserve my job. Things quickly escalated. He left the office and walked into the restaurant. A random table asked him for a refill and he told them frick you. The police got called and he was escorted out. He then passed out in his car with the heat going on a warm spring day. Luckily another employee noticed him while leaving. He said the windows of his car had started to build condensation on them and the guy was slumped over the wheel. 911 was called again. The guy could hardly put a sentence together until the police showed up again. He then somehow pulled it together as the police pulled up and he drove away after talking to the cops. A few months later he was on an arrest site for possession of M and H and had a few other charges. I was a partner business but wasn't involved in the day to day management or anything much anymore. Started another venture. I'm a big rough looking black guy, which is important for the story. I can't remember the reason. But I needed to sign some paperwork and it had to happen within the hour. I think it had to do with a big client and some type of equity in their business in exchange for service. So I left the gym and drove straight to the office. I was showered and clean. But in casual clothing. Jeans and a t-shirt. When I arrived, the receptionist said very loudly can I help you. There was already something off with her tone. But I didn't really care. I simply said yes. I'd like to see Mr. Hampton. He's expecting me. I should have said my name, which she'd have maybe recognized, but I don't know why I didn't or she didn't ask. She didn't pull up a schedule, ask on the intercom, call his line or anything. She then laughed and said Mr. Hampton doesn't take walk-in so this alone wouldn't be a big deal, even though I think the laugh is rude. She then turned her chair away from me with her back facing me. I said excuse me and she put headphones in. There was one other guy waiting to see our office manager for a job as a courier and he was kind of snickering and amused. It was embarrassing and unacceptable. I then raised my voice and said I need to see Mr. Hampton and I'm going ahead. As I said, he's expecting me. She just laughed, but wouldn't buzz me in. It's a set of office suites and to get to what we call the bullpen you have to be buzzed in. I don't know if she saw me through the glass, but the office manager ran up and buzzed me in, and greeted me by name. The receptionist went white as a sheet. I could tell she was crapping bricks. I signed the papers and let my partner know what had happened. He walked out with me and just told her to pack her bags. Legitimately fired on the spot. When I look back, I feel kind of bad for her, but it was so ridiculous. There's no reason to treat anyone that way. A client could have turned up underdressed as well. Absolute madness. Don't feel bad. A decent receptionist would have asked for your name and checked with her boss if she doubted he really was expecting you. The fact she went as white as a sheet when she heard your name shows she knew it. I was supervising a tech support call center. One of the female techs walks up to me, face white as a ghost. I ask her what's wrong. She doesn't say a word just gestures for me to follow her. I do. She points me around a corner of cubes. I find one of the agents with pee on his screen. Trousers down. Hands busy. We did him a solid. Security escorted him out. They packed up his belongings wearing gloves. We told him we wouldn't press charges if we never heard from him again. I left a few months after that. But at least while I was there nothing more was heard from him. I think for some reason he really wanted to lose his job and couldn't make himself quit or come up with a less lewd way to get himself fired. This particular call center wasn't shy about calling the cops either. Before I became a supper guy was arrested for cramming orders for extra commission. Ended up having to pay full restitution and 2 years probation on top of it. Loved bragging about hard work and dedication too retail manager. I had an employee that we hired for a seasonal position. She worked pretty well but was kinda loud and obnoxious. She liked to sneak food to her cash register and eat between customers despite a couple of warnings. I thought I saw her with food at her register again so I went to investigate. As I walked up on her she had a full on fast food meal sitting in an open drawer with a customer in front of her. She realized I was standing behind her and said what the frick are you looking at she was terminated on the spot. She even went as far as to purposely bump into me while leaving and started screaming that I hit her. She had announced that she was pregnant a week or so earlier so of course that played into the drama. She said she was going to sue me for hitting her and her baby. She was freaking nuts. Nothing ever came of it. 
She called the district manager later that week to complain about me. I had already sent the DM the camera footage so he just politely told her to frick off and we never heard from her again. Not a manager, but when I was in a meeting with some people that came up from Netflix. Super important meeting. With super important people. One of the women from sales. Who honestly didn't even need to be there. But she was often very pushy about getting into meetings and usually got her way. Farted. And it stunk bad. It was a relatively small boardroom. And it got quite hot during the winter. Well. This normally unpleasant room was now filled with an extremely unpleasant odor. A scent that paints a picture of an abandoned old folks home. Where the trash bags of dirty diapers and moldy soft foods were left to sit and rot away with the building. It was a very obvious fart smell. To say the least. And we all heard it. And knew who it came from. But, as mature adults in their place of work. Obviously no one said anything. And the meeting continued until the woman that farted, overwhelmed with embarrassment, interrupted the meeting in order to blame the fart on one of the Netflix people. It was super awkward, completely derailed the meeting, and I believe even legitimately angered both people from Netflix. She was fired before the Netflix people headed back to LA. Not a manager but I worked at the store and was friends with the junior manager who told me about it. It was a well known clothing store. My friend D was closing up for the night along with another manager P. As they were closing up they were chatting. It was Friday night so they were asking about weekend plans etc. P said he was too broke to do anything. D took out one of the cash bags. Went to grab something else for a second. Came back and started doing the cash for the night. The store had this policy that I think is stupid. If they were under or over up to 100 euros they didn't question it. So as D is sorting out the cash for the night, P starts talking about his plans. D said didn't you say you were broke P said something about cash he forgot he had. D was suspicious but kept quiet. The following day, P was off and D was in, he went to her manager and told him his suspicion that P had taken some of the cash. They checked the security camera for the previous night. And sure enough in the split second D was away from the cash bag P came up and grabbed a 50 euro from it. They then checked footage and realized that this guy had been swiping 50 euros 100 every night he closed the till. He varied it so it was never exactly the same. And kept it under the something went wrong here limit. The head manager called him to come in. Said someone had called in sick and they needed him to cover. I guess he figured they were onto him and he never showed up. He was from a different country. I guess he went back home because he was never heard from again. They estimated he stole a serious amount of money because he worked at the company for several years and regularly closed the till. Early on in my career I was a manager in a big fortune 500 company's call center. The building we were in was built in such a way that you had 3 floors and in the middle of every floor there was a square hole which allowed you to look all the way down to the ground floor. With a big light well on top so the building was very bright. On the ground floor there was a set of computers that everybody could use to do all their non-work related stuff. Check email, Facebook, ETC, etc. One evening I was working a late shift when one of the security guards comes over to me and asks me to come with him. So I follow him to the balcony and he points downwards. One of the guys who wasn't on my team directly but was part of the same language group I was a manager in. Was sitting behind one of the PCs in the middle of the floor watching P and giving himself the old inside the pants rub down so I instantly started laughing at the absurdity of the situation. Which caused him to turn around. Which in turn caused his dong in his hand, to pop out of his pants as he looks up with a deer caught in the headlight look. The absurdity of the situation was hilarious but what made it even better is we escorted him out of the building and told him to come back the day after to come collect his things and his P45. Formed a show termination of employment. When I told my manager later on he went oh, Dino was at it again was he, yeah we've been trying to catch him for ages, he used to jerk it in the bathroom but we never were able to catch him. She left behind incredibly bad, incredibly x-rated, incest-riddled supernatural fanfiction on my computer desktop. Of course she wrote herself in as a Mary Sue. Of course she used the phrase hot meat love wand. Of course she cried and blamed her autistic ADHD for writing about Dean and Sam slamming her various little wet woman holes. 
Of course she blasted me on her tumblr. Some explanations. This merry little tale took place in 2013 at a research facility. Fanfiction writer was already on very thin ice. For screaming at her boss. Boy. Never finishing projects. And coming in late on multiple occasions. Screwing up meetings. Getting on my computer while I was in a beating and writing about being the lucky Pierre in a Dean and Sam a field tower was the last straw. My co-worker found her tumblr, which she put on her LinkedIn profile. Why? God, why? The piece was number 11 hour of god knows how long, so it started off hot and heavy right on the first page, which is all I got too. I got to meet wands and wet holes and nope like you wouldn't believe. All I wanted to do was write a memo. Dang it. She now works in a morgue in Texas. So she was a typical supernatural fan. Source. I watch the show, enjoy most of it, can't stand the fandom. So I was young, and I was going with my uncle in his car. We found a beer distributor truck parked in the middle of the road. Literally he was horizontally occupying both lanes. We waited and when we saw they weren't planning to move my uncle got put and gently told them to move so we could pass. They said yeah but we waited another 5 minutes and they wouldn't move. So my uncle got out again and told to move. Now more firmly. Frick off. We are working. Don't you see? Go other way and they laughed. Then my uncle calmly called his best friend. Who actually was the manager of that distribution company. He told him the issue and the number of the truck and then his friend immediately said sorry and hanged up. It seemed very rude. But then we saw that he called in the truck's radio and we heard everything. The manager was very angry and first told them to move. And then leave the truck there and go home. He fired them at the spot. Over radio. Changed casually to actually. And carriles to lanes. And BTW. That is a frick ton of upvotes. Tom Hanks for Reading. Man seems risky with a truck full of beer right there. My first boss was telling some war stories. Here are the best ones. All much more interesting than mine. In the 90s he worked for a phone company that purchased one of the first prepaid cell phone startups. This was a bad deal because it came with all their baggage. Employees. From top to bottom was a total mess organized crime connections. Money laundering. Stolen goods etc. The old manager. 5 feet 3 in his 40s. Fancipants. Was banging several of the ladies. The ladies got extra perks for being his friend like extended time off. Overtime pay when they did not work. It all fell apart when they learned about each other and got into a fight over him at work. 5 feet 3 inches was fired. Ladies on probation since they were afraid of losing jobs if they said no. After that my boss was promoted and had to take over this mess. In 6 months fired 18 people. One young guy had family connections and major anger management issues. Let's call him AM. AM was not logging into phones. Taking 2 hour lunch breaks etc. One day a co-worker gave him grief about slacking off so AM walks away. He comes back with his heavy desk phone and goes behind the guy who was sitting in a chair and yanks him backwards sending the poor guy sprawling onto the ground. AM proceeds to beat the guy with his desk phone. Sent him to the hospital. Obviously AM arrested and fired. One of the ladies earned extra money during lunch breaks. Let's call her Trixie she was giving her male co-workers a release in the bathroom for a donation. At the Christmas party she got caught in the restaurant bathroom red handed by one of the higher ups. Trixie and her John were let go. Anyone involved in the Trixie and John mess ended up making the mistake of telling the whole story about the activities at work. Sounds like a dive restaurant in New Jersey. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.